All right. You got your audio figured out on the first try, Bo? I can hear you if you can hear me. Yep. How are you? How about that? I'm getting pretty good at it now. At least with my computer. If my computer that like starts twitching out and I have to go to Maria's computer, then it's going to be a debacle again. Okay. Look at that. White wine for Quinn. I love it. Oh, no, no. This is uh, that Jefferson's. Oh. Dude, it's <laughs> oh. so good. When I know. You, I've... The one that both me and Jake thought you bought an entire bottle for him. No, nah, I'll get him a bottle. I'll bring one to the, the bachelor okay. party. <laughs> but i get i don't get a sip i'm not allowed that no no okay hold on one second <laughs> well you guys keep talking i got it We're not even doing anything yet. it's really good I, my dad told me about it when we were at the grocery it's nice down here no one drinks any of these bourbons these really nice bourbons they're always in stock oh that, yeah that's that would be nice <clears throat> you don't get any jack daniels though. that one's always gone so let's go Welcome back to the good, bad, and the garbage. Uh, today, so I think I'll be posting this after the Masters happen, but in honor Blame. of the Masters, uh, we're going to do a golf movie here. I decided to go with The Legend of Baker Vance because I just thought to myself, what's a golf movie that is probably bad, but I might have liked as a kid? This is the first one I thought of. Um, might have opened a can of worms that we'll talk about at the end of the episode. All right. Um, so yeah, well, Quinn and I already started kind of started a discussion, which I think we should just pause and hold on one second. Probably something Ma- worked on that one. My no, I'd be curious oh. to talk to them, like say like Lynn or somebody and see if he yeah has ever felt this. Uh, I'm, a- I'm so out of my element on this. Well, I, that's I the thing. Like existed. when I picked this movie, I didn't really anticipate this too much because it was more like the masters is coming up pick a golf movie it's a golf movie that i think is probably bad but i liked oh bigger fans but it kind of opened the door on other issues and it's like we're three white guys yeah i have no stance on this because i have no yeah so it might just be a a second well you guys can keep talking i'm trying to figure out why my volume is like stagnant yeah no problem so Maybe it'll just be a short discussion, but I, I want to like just save that part, like the whole that whole stereotype for the end. Like that's fine. Just don't like just just not really touch it until the end. We'll just talk about other things that like didn't like about the movie, whatever. And at the end, we'll like touch on that part of it. And that's fine with me. Let's see where it goes. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> just be a nice person. What yeah. the fuck is going on with this? But, uh, yeah, it stars Matt Damon, Will Smith, Charlize Theron, two Oscar winners, one Oscar nominee uh, there. So the plot is during the Great Depression, Georgia socialite Adele Invergordon, Charlize Theron, announces a pub- publicity gathering, high stakes match, or struggling family golf course featuring the greatest golfers of the era. I like uh, greatest golfers of the era. It's two golfers. Once promising local golfer Randolph Juno, Matt Damon, whose career and life were derailed by World War I, uh, is brought in to play along the stars, but his game is weak. This is a long synopsis. Until the ignab, charismatic Baker Vance, Will Smith, offers to coach him back into the great golfer he once was. So uh, it starts out, though, with Jack Lemmon as, like, the older version of the kid that we, we kind of watch the movie through the eyes of the kid. Hardy Greaves, I think, is his name. And this was Jack Lemmon's last movie, I want to say. Do you guys know who that actor yeah, is? the old died. guy at the beginning? He, he died right after this. He's also the one in uh, The Angry Angry Men. Oh, or uh, what's it called? Grumpy Old Men. Grumpy Old Men. Yes. Old Men. Yes. Uh, big time actor. I think he won two or three Oscars in his heyday. You know, he did Some Like It Hot, which is a famous movie of his. He was a huge he golfer. credit on this one. Yeah, he was just an avid golfer. So he, you know, it was kind of like, oh, golf? Yeah, I'll do this quick two scenes or whatever it is. Um, so the movie's actually a flashback where he thinks about, you know, the early parts of his life during the Great Depression. Uh, also, this guy could chain up his diet because five heart attacks in 10 years is not good. That was know, he started going through it. <laughs> I so, it. so casually. He does. Wait, was, we'll... go, go for it, Bill. Go on. I was going to say, well, I, there's a the the whole i 
idea of it when he wakes up at the end like that's into the future we can talk about that yeah. but like he just pops up like from a heart attack like he just got back from a bad nightmare <laughs> yeah no yeah we'll talk about the ending the ending is one of those like it's supposed to be an ambiguity where it's like oh what happened this or that it's supposed to be a thinker i think it you know it's kind of straightforward but um oh mr the- know-it-all <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna admittedly, for some people. admittedly, part of this movie, like I'll be, I'll be putting on my golf hat a little bit. Like that's probably a little bit of annoying for some people, yeah. but since I've gotten into golfing, there are little things that I probably will bring up about this movie that bugs me that probably won't bug other people. So, Matt Damon swing. Yes. That's garbage. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's on, a big one. That's, that's a big finish one. Finish the synopsis so we can just like get into all yeah. this. Yeah, let me just let me just say a couple more things here. So this movie was was panned critically. It's forty three percent around tomatoes, forty seven percent Metacritic, six point seven uh, on IMDb, and was it? There's a here. Roger Ebert gave it. He gave it three and a half stars though. But it it handles a sports movie the way Billy Holiday handles a trashy song by finding the love and pain behind the story. So this is like Robert Redford who directed this, Academy Award winning director, great actor. Love Robert Redford. Yeah. He um this was like his follow up, I want to say. Like it wasn't his next movie, but have you ever seen River Runs Through It? Awesome movie. Yeah. So like that's like yeah, that's like his Zen life fly fishing movie. So I think this is kind of like his Zen life, you know, find the meaning of life through golf. And Probably not as well done. I mean, like critically not as well done. It uh, let a couple last things before we get into it. Budget was eighty million dollars. Box office was thirty nine point five million. So it did terribly <laughs> at the box office. Uh, it's based on a book which I've read. It's been a while since I've read it. I remember it being very boring and really very different from the movie like the plot wasn't exactly the same it was similar enough obviously but remember being just different and kind of weird um so yeah uh so that yeah that's it leading into this movie so what do we want to where do we want to start things we liked about it things we didn't like about it you brought up matt damon's golf swing i mean i could i feel like i've watched Walter Hagen would be a would it be a fun guy to have a night with he looks like it he looks like he smokes too many cigars and drinks too much whiskey. Like that is his daily diet. Dude, that John Daly past John Daly. This is a classier version of John Daly. Like John Daly will wear a hoodie and like sweatpants out there, but you well, know they're wearing they're wearing movie. this is the time of golf where you gotta wear like a three piece was... suit while golfing. Yeah. <laughs> also, how hot were those guys in those sweaters in Savannah, Georgia? These these are the times because like this and Grace Game ever played, like it's kind of that same era where I couldn't golf in those outfits or probably in like with, they have the hickory sticks, right? I I've seen pros these days, like take hickory sticks. And when they hit the ball, they just break them. Cause we like, we just swing too yeah. fast. Like Bryson, it would obliterate. You just, <laughs> he'd probably be proud of it. You know, he'd probably yeah. like in top of the backswing. He's so much force. It just breaks the whole thing before it even gets to the ball. But um, and then he'd try and recite also, some scientific knowledge. Because they say how good they are. They, I mean, they go and do a very descriptive thing of how good they were. Oh, what are they, they shooting? Are they shooting like even? No, no, no. <laughs> that is true. That's something that isn't. Because they never trade. show their scores. They show how far they're off they are from each other. Which, yeah, no, that's that's actually a pretty good point. Uh, no, I got to think. Let me, I'll look it up uh, while we're These are based on it. real golfers, right? The Walter two, Hagen yeah, Bobby, Bobby Jones, Bobby Jones, Walter Hagen, real golfers. Everyone else, not real people. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Bob, I mean, Bobby Jones, he's considered the best amateur of all time. You know, he did the Grand Slam, all four majors in one year, which no one's done since. Tiger did the Tiger Slam where it wasn't in a one-year period, but over a two-year period, he won four in a row. So, I mean, like, he held all four titles. Um, mm-hmm. Walter Hagen, I think even to this day, he has the most PGA championships out of anyone. Which is, you know, it's a major still to today. How but... long? Okay, so if this was in, this was after World War One, so this is like the twenties. This is twenty-eight. Um, this was during Prohibition too, which also another fact they're all drinking hab- heavily, and it's during Prohibition. It's got to be like nineteen twenty, isn't that when the Great Depression started? Twenty, nineteen twenty, and it ended in nineteen thirty-two or thirty-three. I want to okay. say because. 
I think what I was reading, this took place in 1930, right? That's what I was saying. Yeah, so it long... was during Prohibition. And they're all heavily drinking. <laughs> yeah, that could be just, yeah. Like, whoops, we forgot about that. Um, let's see here. I'm but also, how long, so they, they, they go into this whole spiel, like, they're the best golfers of all time. Like, how long has professional golf really been going on in 1930? I mean, long enough, right? Like, greatest game ever 20 played. years? They're the best yeah. golfers for 20 years. Well, I mean, if you want to talk about, like, the British Open, British Open has been going on since, I can, yeah, I can look it up, but that's the... You're going to recite us some facts. It's 15, like... 1500 and yeah man you know every oscar but you don't know when the british open started yeah how dare you british open founded also 1860 got some illegal contraband here what is that it's only made in colorado you can't it never leaves the state bring that back huh yeah good i don't think these people were shooting like even par or under par that often um So, like, you're right. Like, that was something that I noticed, too. Like, they just say 12 sh- shots back and even. They don't really say their score. Like, I don't, they, I mean, not they as do low a, as these days. A spiel on each one and how amazing they are. Yeah, I mean, you got. I like how they do that. And then she gets all nervous when she brings up the Randolph Juna thing. But it's like, you prepared this speech. Like, you knew you had to say this. <laughs> just yeah. leave that part out if you think it's going to make him feel uncomfortable. Yeah, why are you talking about his that, one trauma that you guys have literally had a thing about for 10 years? Their their whole relationship felt like, I don't, and I watched this while I was like cooking dinner last night. And then I watched part of it. Like, it felt like I was always constantly kind of doing something, but it felt like their relationship was just like, I don't know. Did it do anything to the story other than like, she was like, she kind of came back into his life and was supportive. But like, I really don't think it was like, can I say this Valuable is her to worst his character. role ever? Yeah. Well, what did you say? Her worst role ever. She was so she, annoying throughout the entire movie. My she biggest, added, no. My biggest issue with her, and kind of most of them, I'm not great at judging accents, but her accent, it fell it in strange. and out like like it, it. She just stopped having it every once in a while. And That's because something... she's South African. You can't. <laughs> Well, I mean, she's an actress. Like, she's an Academy Award winning actress. Like, she knows how to do, like, Leo is from the US, but he does an amazing African accent in Blood Diamond. Like, does, but he's um, also a better actor. Well, Will Smith. I don't know about that, but I mean, I, he might be. Go on, Bo. Sorry. I was going to say, while we're on accents, Will Smith, and I remember specifically in the locker room when he's like cleaning his shoe or whatever after yeah. like, he's having the pep talk with him yeah the, the first uncle rufus, rufus the uncle definitely rufus. flips from like a 1930s accent and he starts eking towards like bad boys accent <laughs> like it is like it starts changing this is after the and bad it kind of works its one. way back i like i yeah. caught it's like all of a sudden it just when he when he was telling him like that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard you, anybody say when he was talking about like the soul dies and it doesn't matter. He's like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I was oh, like, like Fresh Prince that coming does out not there. sound like Will Smith from 10 minutes ago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, accents, I get it. Like they're hard to do, but that's why you have how many takes to do it. I always remember the one scene with Charlize Theron where like her accent just completely goes away is uh, while Matt Damon's playing, she pulls him aside. Accent gone. She just sounds like her like normal self and it's like it's just so blatant i'm just like you couldn't have redone that like you're robert Redford. like you couldn't have redone that but kudos like, to her though i actually think she might be better looking now than she was then oh yeah years later yeah yeah no, I, she looked better, I actually didn't uh, even know it was her Mad until you said it mad max than she did in this movie. she looked what better in mad max fury road shaved head you think the bald one-armed version of her looks better than like her southern <laughs> bell yeah. self in this that girl could take care of me this girl could not do anything take care of like i overall kind of like the beginning part where they set everything up like you don't really you know they kind of span how many years but it's this no, is it's this is the city of savannah this is ran off juna he was great they were in love he goes to war like i thought it did an okay job of like setting everything up and kind of oh yeah you everything it wasn't, you need it, to know. wasn't it felt meaty it felt like there was substance to it so you could justify why they were acting the way they were the rest of the movie based on that opening. 
yeah like you kind of got a sense of who those characters were for the rest of the movie after that like opening five minutes or whatever so i did i did like that positive thing right there um i do like will smith's intro into the movie like the first time you see him coming from the dark yeah that is a great line i do like it's something i you know i quote all the time especially like i'm giving people shit like uh, I could have hit you out there. Great, well, great judge if I was hitting them balls, I figured, I figured that's where I'd be in a harm's way. Like, I, I, I think that's, you know, he's got some great girl. one-liners in here. Yeah. Uh, I think I've given that line to Birch a couple times. Probably. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> he would be the one to give it to because I feel like he'd actually get offended. <laughs> Just <laughs> dig in. Uh, so, yeah, I do, I do like that. I like the scene where they're playing poker uh, or that's like when. Hardy Greaves goes and finds Matt Damon. Is that funny. scene somewhat famous? Because I feel like I've seen screenshots or something from his speech or something. The brain it, it looks one. really familiar. Like when he's just sitting there, like looking kind of raggedy and he's drinking yeah. or whatever. And I forgot, like he has like a couple one-liners that sound like they could be like memorable lines you could spew out to other people. Dude, but the brain cells speech is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That one's awesome. But yeah, no, right it was here. a cool scene, and I felt like I was like, "Did I see this movie before?" And I, there's no way I have. If I have, I would not remember it. But I do feel like I've either seen clips of it or seen like, like just pictures of it with the words written out, you know, mm-hmm. like a meme or something. Yeah, I think that that's probably a pretty heavily used. Like, yeah, I think that's probably one of a couple scenes that are pretty well known for this movie. And yeah, the brain cell scene or monologue, dialogue, whatever you want to say, is pretty good. Uh, you know, every drink you take kills a thousand brain cells. Doesn't matter. First ones to go are the what is it? What is it? The first ones to go are the Can quiet I ones. It? I like it a lot. Yeah, like first cells to go are the quiet now, ones. So you say everything real the loud. The table is how drunk is drunk and drunk enough, and the answer is that it's all a matter of brain cells. Yeah, brain cells. That's right, Hardy. You see, every drink of liquor you take kills a thousand brain. Cells. Now that doesn't matter much because we got billions more. And the first, the sadness cells die, so you smile real big. And yep. the quiet cells go, so you just say everything real loud for no reason at all. Is that okay? That's okay because the stupid cells go next. So everything you say is real smart. Which and is finally come the memory cells. Those are tough sons of bitches to kill. You Which said that like with like a perfect... very pathetic southern accent, by the way. Yeah, when it was just like, say, I think over... just, it, like, I mean, like the, the actors in this movie, you just quit stupid. halfway through. <laughs> yeah. The way they word it makes it sound like it too, because they have like. <laughs> apostrophes and yeah. hyphened words and yeah which is that i mean that sums up a drunk person perfectly right like you get loud first or smile first you get loud you think you're smart so you start talking a lot and then you black out like that's the perfect well it fits his character too because he's trying to drown out the memories of yeah basically the only one surviving his entire platoon. yeah so i like i like a lot of the stuff in the beginning like that I don't buy her just getting the two most famous golfers in the world to play her course, like yeah. on a random weekend like that. I, I appreciate like she like pitches it in different ways to them to fit like things that they like. Like Bobby Jones is pretty prideful about his game and he doesn't like that Walter Hagen beat him. So she uses that to pitch him. And then Walter, Walter Hagen is apparently just like, you know, he chases women so it's oh we've got all these helpless women in savannah why don't you come and take care of them oh by the way bobby jones is coming too so you know i i appreciate that she does that but it's you know one visit like that you're not going to get the two most famous golfers her whole stick just don't i don't like it i don't like any of it you just don't like her character at all i don't like her character and i don't like hardy hardy either hardy just is annoying too i guess now that I'm thinking about it, did it ever get resolved? Did they ever talk about like maybe they did at the very end, but I was kind of like, forget it, like this movie's over. What happened to the golf course? Because was the whole point of it to save the golf course? Yeah, it was. Yeah, and, and then, I, like, did they talk about the golf course? No, like after it, it was ha- only like, about gone. Their... it was the redemption story. Yeah, it was the redemption story. <laughs> yeah, I think okay. it's probably assumed that maybe it's fine. <laughs> like she's able to keep it because of getting this together but yeah i don't i don't know for sure um also, how is she getting that ten thousand dollar prize money if no one's paying to even come on the course she, she did just s- come on with her cars and shit she did pour up the course pour <laughs> up that course well you gotta let him finish um but yeah she said she'd sell everything except the course and she thinks that she could get ten thousand dollars out of that um 
but then yeah you just drive on the course and turn the headlights on of course uh, cars, cars weighed a lot less i mean that. yeah that part made no sense it seemed like just like i mean obviously just point cars towards the course and just make it light out again which then also when they was, see off it's so light out yeah I off in pitch blackness before and finish that hole it was yeah. This is the good thing. Ten grand on the line, dusk, and then it's pitch black by the time they're at their second balls. I know. Do you have ten also, grand on the line? You were shot down to Walter on the beach, and it's complete daylight. Yeah. Well, then they cut to Baker Vance walking down the beach after he makes the yeah, putt, and, and it's like a beautiful <laughs> sunset. sunset. <laughs> little continuity air there. Little kind. Con- Got to have the beautiful sunset with him walking off. But yeah. No. I know there's theories like I know that that we're going to get to the end that the thing you wanted to talk about, Matt, and I know like the end of the theory that we might talk about, like when he wakes up from the heart attack and Baker's there or whatever. I didn't think I'm not going to give away what I think about this movie, but it wasn't like that bad. I was watching it and it was pretty mundane. And then like he made the putt at the very end and I was like, didn't he take a penalty stroke? And then I found out. And I was like, yeah, they did. And I was like, wait, they're literally like going to end it in a tie. Like, that's yeah. it. I was so mad. I was like, this movie's done. I hate it. I hate yeah. it. I could not. I don't know if that's like the red blooded American in me that nothing can end in a goddamn tie. Someone's <laughs> got to <laughs> win this. Have you, have you seen quickly like, off topic? You have to be fucking kidding me. Have you seen Ted Lasso? I have the first season, yes. The, their <laughs> opening in his press conference, he's like, win or lose, we're going to be great. Or tie. Oh, that's right. You guys do ties over here. Where I come <laughs> from, if we allowed ties. It'd be like the sign of the apocalypse or something. So, no, <laughs> it's very American, probably, of us to not be accepting. But even as a kid, I was very upset that it was a tie. And the way he yeah, celebrated, I, mean, he I was like, did he not take stroke, the so penalty? Tech- so technically he tied, but technically yeah. kind of won. Maybe he shouldn't have moved the small brush away from now, his ball. Why did he need to move that? And also, I mean, I didn't do well in physics, but that thing would have definitely not moved a ball. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I've seen little things move a golf ball before. If you're on a hill or slope or something, the real question is, would you guys have called a penalty on yourself? Uh, I would have never been I- there in the first place because I am terrible. Quinn is an honorable man as far as I'm aware. <laughs> I would have given my tails two strokes. Yeah. <laughs> just to be safe. Just give me yeah, two. Just to be safe. I don't want anybody coming back at me. When I'm down 10 strokes, I'm Matt still. <laughs> right. Um, Dude, no, the, yeah. Walter Hagen's line of like the three bad shots and one good shot still gets you far. I say that probably at least once around yeah which is a real thing that's like a true thing that he has said and like he mapped his game around was you know in his mind bad shots in one round than most people do in a lifetime yeah (laughs) yeah so and it's funny their swings we're just gonna get into it now their swings i didn't think were that bad but you brought up earlier matt damon like so going into this movie he's zero golfing in his life how did he get this role well, he's oh, Matt Damon. Like, you know, he's dude, an Academy okay, Award can winner we at talk, this point. Okay, can I take an aside with Matt Damon? How many movies does he have where he just stares off in the camera and, like, the wind lightly <laughs> – with that smile and the wind, like, lightly makes not as flutter. Not as many as Ryan Gosling. Yeah. Oh, yeah King. I don't know. I guess I haven't seen as many Ryan Gosling. Because I've seen some Ryan Gosling movies that are pretty badass. Where he's no, I like Gosling. Ryan Gosling a lot. I just – he's the master of just a look. Like, he just looks – and you're just like, yeah, but his look isn't never smile. It's always the serious look. Right. He's just Matt he Damon is look. always like, and I need, I can't. Maria is just like Ryan Gosling is so hot. <laughs> I mean, she's not here. wrong. Yeah. No, she's not. He's uh, he's a handsome fellow. He also has like a good aura about like the way like his look. It's his look. Yeah. You just look at me like you look like a sassy. If you hot want a dude. great watch, Driver. If you want a great Driver's, Gosling movie, yeah, yeah no, oh, Driver's great. Phenomenal. I changed my whole perspective on him after watching him. Barely says a word in that movie. Just I know. Needs to it's all, it's be a, his it's handsome a look. look. Yeah, he's just a look. look. The look. He just looks. It's basically well, no, nah, I shouldn't say that. Crazy, stupid love. He's actually. That was good. That's hilarious. It is hilarious. It's like maybe my, one of my favorite rom coms. It is. It's me too. That's good. Anyways, um, <laughs> Matt Damon look. He does that in so many movies where he just stares and it's like a half grin in the in the wind. For like five seconds. Hey man, 
something's working i guess keep going yeah. with it <laughs> typecasting maybe <laughs> i mean this is before his action action yeah, like jason jason Bourne really got him going into the action. he's made some good action movies too <laughs> elysium's awesome so yeah matt damon's golf swing is terrible in this like it is tough for me to get my to get past uh tell us how you really feel <sighs> all right here we go like you know tra- what the the only thing I'll say about him that I liked is he lined up with the ball and then he spread his feet apart like a little professional. It's like you watched how professionals did it where they put their feet and they're like, back step one, front step run. <laughs> like he lined himself up. And I'm like, looks like a golfer there. <laughs> That's pretty good. He did He did the one thing that anyone can do while playing golf. <laughs> yeah. He took his stance. I just, like I said, as a kid, who, who cares? Like I didn't, I didn't, Go, like I golf but didn't know anything about it but I just watch it now and like I have it on right now and I'm watching it and it's the scene where he's hitting off into the darkness and Will Smith is about to show up this, this swing is very bad and you can see the little white ball and like where it goes for a little while too and it's just hazel hazel and I get he's supposed to be bad at this point but even when Will Smith shows up and he's like yeah give me one more just like that you can see the ball he tops the shit out of the ball and like he still isn't putting a good swing on it and I get it, like he had never golfed in his life, Matt Damon. He but he tried he trained with someone at some golf courses to try to get his swing figured out. It just looks very bad. And again, that isn't gonna matter to a lot of people. But just for me, it's something I notice. It was cringeworthy. So you know I can I, see I mean it's fair though, because like in a movie that's based around sports, like I watch like one is the movie with uh shit who's the cat woman that they play like the one-on-one basketball game that gets really berry is it halle berry we, I don't we, bring to say up, that. we bring it up the halle berry cat woman movie right now oh, well God, i'm just when they play the basketball scene when they're like grinding on each other and it's the worst <laughs> basketball skills ever that's like the epitome of it but like even watching other it's arguably bad... worst scene in hollywood history that fucking <laughs> basketball scene <laughs> uh, i'm glad i've never seen it you gotta oh you i'll send you, the, oh, you, send you the clip later yeah like, just a clip i'm good I'm gonna, i've only seen the clip i've never seen the movie it's bad but, uh, it's a point one in my rankings i think i mean it's a point one out of ten go on but i feel like especially when you're interested in a sport not even just golf but like watching basketball soccer Ooh. for me baseball whatever i like watching something that's like or what's a good one is like when they try to act like they're competitive beach volleyball players and i'm like mother fucker that's not how beach volleyball is played at <laughs> so all like, that's that your obscure one like so much you play volleyball so, so you you're gonna really know this volleyball like shit. top gun then <laughs> oh yeah top gun <laughs> you wouldn't play in jeans yeah all the, oh. yeah i all my outdoor tournaments in jeans it's a style it's a look jeans guy um mm-hmm. so that's that's like my my one of my little nitpick things with this is the Matt Damon swing. Uh, another one is uh, this kind of goes into the whole like Zen life golf thing that Robert Redford was going for. But a big thing in this movie is like everyone is born with an authentic swing that they can like look back on, and it's like their perfect swing for golf. It's another thing where I kind of roll my eyes at, and I'm like, I don't think golf is one of those things where you can just like you can have some natural athletes with it, but. <laughs> to the idea that everyone has like a perfect swing that they're born with that's a little on the cheesy side for me even for this kind of know. movie didn't you not see that highlight of bryson hitting those t-offs this morning that is all natural baby <laughs> yeah that's that's an all natural 100 beef right there <laughs> <laughs> you better have a other acl ligaments on, like in the freezer right now because eventually those things are blowing out and they're just he's gonna, gonna be he's taking one, shooting one right up in. stem cells between rounds Oh, yeah, dude. he's gonna be uh like uh south park where they're doing knee replacement like they, you know like <laughs> it's just gonna turn bad yeah no he's so many people with bryson are like give it five years and he's gonna be done but if he wins a million times in those five years like i guess who, yeah, cares? who cares like is it worth he's it? a good so, heel too he's better than like i actively never want patrick reed to win because he's a shitty person but like yeah. bryson actually like being competitive and watching him lose is interesting like i want him to be up in the top of the leaderboard because i want him to lose like i want him it's, to miss a putt on 18 to lose yeah no bryson and and even like uh people are gonna maybe hate hate me for this bryson and tiger i want them in the top five of every tournament but never win 
How dare you? Riggs is going to come find you and murder you. There's so much nostalgia with Tiger. People want him to win so badly. No, people love Tiger, and I get it. I have never been a huge Tiger fan. Like, I've always appreciated him because, like, what he does for the game. Everyone watches. Because he took so many titles away from your boy, Mick. I think think him winning the Masters in 18 – was 18, right? Was, like – 19? 19, 19. 2019. Oh, yeah, I guess. He was the really? defending champ last year when Dustin. Oh, he won. was. I thought he was one year removed. No. Um, Dustin Patrick like Reed. Patrick good, Reed like, won it was in like a good cherry on his story. Like, it should just – now I can, like – I want to see – like you said, I want to see Tiger compete because it's good for golf. But, like, I'm not going to, like, really care if he wins the same yeah. way. I really wanted him to win that Masters because it's, like – I mean, that is going to make a cool documentary yeah. not made by HBO like they did. Hopefully a better one in yeah, the future. That one wasn't great. So I, I think any documentaries with Tiger is going to be tough if he isn't involved because then you're just And he probably will never be. And, yeah, he never will. And it's and because I'm saying this doesn't mean, like, I want bad things to happen to him, like when he got in the car accident and everything. Like, no, like I'm not one of those people out there. And there are people like that who are, like, happy that that happened for him. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, no. I just, you know, I'm just kind of over him, like, you know, I don't know. I do think he's the greatest of all time. People say it's him or Jack. Like, I do think he's better than Jack at this point. But Dude, he was so dominant. Yeah. In the early 2000s. That wasn't even what, close. I never, I never even heard about his cut streak until like, what, well, 142 <laughs> or whatever. And they said like the next closest is like, what, and then like 90? Like, he it's obliterated like obliterated people. Yeah. He was so good. He owns every record. So yeah, in, insane. Um, we're we're struggling to stay on track here. No, nah, it's fine. Uh, you brought up the kid Hardy Greaves. I thought it was kind of weird that he was just embarrassed that his dad had a weird yeah. job. I'm like, you're old enough to know you're in a Great Depression right now. Like, you're Your dad old has a job, and he had a real job before that. Like he knows his dad hasn't like wasn't working like a leaf raking job his entire yeah. life like he had a business like obviously something happened yeah well the his kids, character like, bothered me the yeah kid. like the, the kids He's how old? like he knows what's going on in the what world is his fucking name i want to see what else he did that I'll actor you. yep oh man yeah i can't think there of anything else that he is j done. michael moncrief what a name <laughs> okay what else is he in <clears throat> most recently he was in uh, bingo night it's as an like editor a... are you on imdb oh yeah, says, yeah 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 the oh, only, so only acting, and one actor yeah one acting credit is hardy greaves in legend of bigger bands <laughs> everybody watched ah! this movie and was like god damn this kid's so fucking pathetic i'm never gonna have him. <laughs> he was born in savannah georgia so, <laughs> so he just probably walked the streets and probably like hey you you little kid <laughs> you get you over here actor. you're in this movie now <laughs> that's probably exactly what happened i did think he was kind of funny in the beginning of the movie like he had some pretty funny lines like in that scene we talked about earlier when he goes and finds matt damon at the uh when he's playing poker or whatever yeah uh-huh. i thought he's kind of funny and that like and before and, that but and he pretends to be asleep and he sees charlie's theron in her nightgown Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> basically like, just wearing would, another even, dress even if even if he was asleep and even if matt damon truly told charlie is like he's probably asleep you don't have to worry about it why would you still even though like i know that's not what her goal was but still in just any mindset why would you just be like can we just maybe go through a door and close like, the door see this you? room over here like the bedroom right there let's just go in there prefer not to have sex in front of a like 12 year old boy <laughs> again different time bo <laughs> True. um also she was just wearing a dress it wasn't like yeah but it's like 30s right so like that's scandalous Ooh, back sorry then. ankles baby <laughs> yeah exactly gotta keep it below the knee only show the you know ankle stuff like that these people must have been just smelling like straight stank all the time. They must have been sweating so bad. Especially in the south. I in sweat. The humid. I was I sw- sweating today and it was 75 degrees. <laughs> Do you guys have anything 
before we get into maybe the last thing to talk about this movie? Anything I will else? say Will Smith is the saving grace of this movie. If Will Smith wasn't in here and didn't have such a likable character with a lot of great lines. I didn't mind Matt Damon though either. I thought he, he was had a... some good points, he's... but when we got to the golfing, it was just I'd say like he is I mean he's a great actor. So like he's great in all the dramatic or whatever roles that he needs uh-huh. to deliver. It's just whenever I see him swing at a ball or try to react to a <laughs> shot, like even just reacting guy. to like a bad <laughs> shot or a good shot, like it's not great. So no, I like he's a good actor. So everything other than that is he's good in this. Will Smith, like, yeah, he's a very charismatic guy. Uh, I think he has a lot of lines in this that if someone else were to deliver him, yeah, maybe it'd come off as a lot cornier or cheesy. And because uh-huh. it's Will Smith, it's maybe delivered a little better. Uh, so, yeah, I, I agree with that. Also, yeah, I did see, so Robert Redford actually, original plans were for him to play Randolph Jr. and then Morgan Freeman would play Baker Vance. But then he was like, I should probably go with the younger people. So that's where... That was a good originally, choice. Originally, Brad Pitt, probably because of the river runs through it connection, was supposed to be Randolph Juna, but then that fell through. So then it turned into Matt Damon and Will Smith. So Why does it always feel like those? Yeah, whatever. They always feel like they're connected. Brad Pitt and Damon? You just think yeah. like Ocean, the Ocean's movies? Probably. <laughs> and then like George Clooney. Like, let's just throw them all three in the same yeah. <laughs> lump. Like, they're all there. On to the more serious, I guess, part uh, or discussion. If people don't want to listen to this uh feel free to skip is bigger vance even real but uh maybe we should talk about that before <laughs> that, that was the only thing i was gonna say before we get into this before we get into it no yeah <laughs> um no that's a good point the very end i mean he's dead right like he died oh, yeah. He's and dead. He's... yeah clearly the sixth one got him oh, bigger does see i'll see you again but i didn't i don't know like if there's any legitimate obviously i guess not because i didn't even know that I guess I did. Bob Jones and Walter Hagen sounded like familiar names, so I probably should have known that they were real golfers. But I was like, is there some underlying tone that Matt Damon died in World War One? And like, this is all just beggar fans is some symbolism of just like you're reaching nirvana and heaven. <laughs> like, no, I think you dug a little too deep. I'm looking for the depth, Quinn. <laughs> you got to come to the table the with the crazy theories. You gotta- yeah. You got to come because in 10 years, when Robert Redford says, guess what? This is the crazy theory. Then Bo can be like, was right. See? Yeah. Right. If he's wrong, who cares? Yeah. Nobody, nobody will remember this. No. But then the Alex Jones of our podcast, you just throw crazy fucking conspiracies and one of them might stick. I don't know if any of his have stuck. <laughs> the gay frogs hasn't stuck. <laughs> Not yet. Hasn't been disproven yet. <laughs> No, he's right. definitely now dead, can... <laughs> and he's walking off into the sunset with Beggar. Yeah, Beggar's just a—I mean, <laughs> such a stereotypical name. <laughs> like, I just who was like, we need a caddy. What should we name him? Beggar. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> literally carrying a bag like of clubs. <laughs> he's literally a beggar named Beggar. Might be a nickname, obviously. If he's a good caddy, why not? <laughs> Yeah, be like yeah, so. Shoeless Jackson. Shoeless. I mean, Jackson. he might be the best caddy of all time. Arguably, you know, Arguably. Che- Cheech Marlin in uh, Tin Cup. Have you ever seen Tin Cup? I mean, he's got to deal with crazy Kevin Costner in that movie. So, um, no layups. But yeah, it, w- weird scene to like. I don't know. Would you think the dramatic scene where like they're in the woods? It looks like oh. Randolph's going to like pick the ball up and cheat and then Bega like steps in does his whole big speech and like gets him back on track. Like that's like extra level cheesiness for me in a movie or like I don't know. Yeah, but this is like I feel like this is directly pointing into the like final subject the, you want to yeah. talk about. Very true. <laughs> it's like that was like the epitome of what you were Yeah. No. Well, going to go after we'll get into it so last thing the only other thing i think this movie like i remember is the shot between the trees that's like a standing thing with like my dad and like if one of us is in the trees we'll say you're gonna pull off like the bigger van shot it's kind of like the tin cup shot where you're trying to hit it over the water and try to get on the green that's like the only other thing that has resonated with me from this movie is if you're in the woods you're gonna try to pull off the bigger van shot 
I you always pull off the beggar band. You always got to go for it, at least. Too. Ding it off five trees. Yeah, it doesn't work out like it does in this movie very often, but uh okay so yeah let's let's get into the last last topic here so a little more serious content or discussion so if people want to skip ahead i guess go for it but i do think this three is white too. guys knowing no knowledge of yeah. this subject at all yeah so i still think it's important to know like when you said you didn't even know this was a thing so i think it's still important for people to maybe know about but we're probably not going to have a too intuitive of a conversation about it but yeah so the the term magical negro uh, was kind of, I don't want to say invented, but the idea of it was brought to light by Spike Lee. I mean, great director, all-time great. A guy who not only fights for rights outside of film, but for like, you know, uh, film, uh, like screen time and subject matter for the African uh, American community. So he kind of came up with the term magical Negro. And this movie is like the like example that most people use when they when they discuss this like I said you know at Platteville even this movie was talked about in my ethics class because because of this and I had no idea this was a thing either once I found out about this like in my ethics class this is the first time I watched the movie since then it's hard for me to get past it once you know it's like an actual trope and something that's been in Hollywood for a while, it's hard for me to get past it in this movie. I'm not going to lie. Uh, yeah, and then you started showing me that some comedians had made skits on it. Dave Chappelle yeah. has one. <laughs> Key and Peele have one. So I had no idea this even existed. Yeah, and so for people who don't know, uh, that term is just meant for, and, and is the definition of this movie, it's for African-American characters who show up and they're like kind of these spiritual or magical characters who show up and help out white people. Like, the, you know, you got to help out the, like the white savior uh, and they'll do anything to help them out, which is where like the issue lies in it. Like I remember in my ethics class, it was why wouldn't he come back and help another African-American? And Spike Lee's thing with this movie is this movie takes place in a time period and region of the country where, I mean, African-Americans are getting lynched left and right. And this Baker Vance character shows up and he cares about fixing the swing of a white dude. Like that makes zero sense when you think of it that way. Didn't, not that this doesn't have anything to do with, I mean, it has something to do with what you're saying, but I didn't really find like any like, I thought because you had mentioned something about that before we even watched this movie and I was expecting like serious racial undertones in the movie yeah. and I was like well it takes place in the 1930s I expect it to be slightly racist I didn't think this movie was really necessarily racist in the way that they were treating like Will Smith's character but like it was after you had sent the clip of Key and Peele and everything I was like I get it now and then it made me start thinking about other movies and I was like even like Bruce Almighty like I was like, of course, and like he's was, God in it. Yeah. But, and I don't know if that's the best example. And the other one that was like popping in my mind because it's just another golf movie is is uh, Happy Gilmore. <laughs> like, not that he's as magical and mythical, but like, sure. but he's like <laughs> an instructor ha ha helping yeah. him out. Yeah. So no, like Quinn, like before, but like before you came on, like this is the discussion Quinn and I were having, and I was like, maybe we should save this for the podcast. I mean, it's still recorded, so maybe I'll splice it in, but i'm reading about the magical negro stereotype <laughs> yeah i don't i don't always like uh sharing you know like i want to get your guys like honest opinion of the movie so i don't like sharing things that might sway your it opinion doesn't sway my opinion of the movie at all I, it's just i didn't even know this was a stereotype yeah and that's the thing like I, I guess this seemed like a big enough deal to be like this is a real thing yeah i mean it's in everything you read about this movie that's huge yeah like it's the biggest thing on the wikipedia for it or on anything about it like if you had to pick one thing and i'll talk about it later if you had to pick one thing this movie was known for in hollywood it's this it's weird because you think will smith 
in 2000, you know, he's trying to help, you know, African Americans be better in the film industry. He would have seen this role and not taken it, or would have, yeah, well, tried to change it in a different way. Yeah, well, it's you know, I I was trying to find it, but I thought I read somewhere, and this is like not just recently, but a while ago that Will Smith just, he's a big golfer, which I I didn't know until I saw this movie and like read about it later, but he's a big golfer. So he basically just said yes to this movie because like it involved golf. Like he didn't really care about too much else. So it might've just been oversight, but you know, the term What about, okay. So what about Shawshank Redemption? What if, Morgan Freeman's character be considered a magical Negro in that one? No, I wouldn't. No, I mean, I wouldn't consider him a magical. Like he doesn't save Andy Dufresne. The one thing, okay, he's, like his, he's just I, his I, friend, I, you know. Yeah, I get the the stereotype. I'm reading more into it now, but the one thing about this film that I didn't think even steered into racist tones at all is the all the African Americans and there's no. I mean, I know it's post war. But there's no signs of any of the Jim Crow laws being enforced. Yeah. There's no signs. I mean, they're they're all their caddies are like African American on a golf course that probably didn't exist back then. I think for the longest time in the South, caddies were only allowed to be African American. Oh, okay. Because, and that I wouldn't call that a good thing. Like it was because like slave like maybe yeah it's like you're you're helping him like oh. you're you know you know you answer to them like augusta you know where the masters is mm-hmm. they they had that rule in effect until that maybe maybe the 70s i should look that up yeah like because you brought up shawshank quinn and it's Shawshank, uh, Green Mile is another one. Green, so Green Mile is one that it like is considered that because he literally has magical powers and helps yeah. out, you know, like white characters. The other oh. examples, you know, I don't think it's necessary fits this trope if it's just an African American who you know instructs them, but it's like the spirituality of them and the idea that they would do anything to help out the white sacrifice white people yeah like they would sacrifice so like, like Shawshank like they're just they're friends I don't know if that's necessarily like you know fits the mold here but I kind of get where you're going with that um but yeah I think this movie like in Hollywood the thing it's sadly known for is this right now like the Wikipedia page on you know like this trope mentions uh legend of Baker vance and talks about Baker vance more than the wikipedia page for Baker vance just is in length you know what i mean like uh so yeah is Baker vance i mean i know it's like he's he helps him out and everything but like i don't know i guess i I probably should start watching more movies and paying attention to it that are other good examples because i it's not like excusing that this is an example but like it doesn't feel like he's magical as much as he is just instructional and like psychologically a friend which isn't like he's still helping him out like i don't it's but that's playing into reality like you still like you can't all of a sudden if you're trying to make a realistic movie about golf in 1930 you can't be like some guy who's just gonna be like point his finger and have the ball slowly move to the right away from the water or something that's the thing like you brought up that got me was like I don't see any tones of racism anywhere else in no. this movie. Like, and that's something like, like both of you brought that up. And I think it's like, a, like in the movie, there is little to no actual racism as, as in like they show bathrooms that are like colored and white or water fountains that white are that people way. People and African-American people are mingling in stores yeah, and like, on the streets. They and... don't call, they don't call beggar, you know, the N word. Uh, they don't, yeah, the N word isn't used, used at all, you know, in the South. So like, you're right. Like on the surface like that, there's no racism. So I get like people, and that's the tricky part with it and why it took till Spike Lee to like give it a, a term if I'm reading the information right. Like it's not in your face, but it's like a metaphorically there, and that's maybe 
it's more you know subtle or underlined so it isn't like as in your face so maybe that's why people don't notice it um and maybe why it's been it's been going on for so long because it is kind of metaphoric and like in this movie like the magical thing like yeah he is he an angel like there's some magic behind that but it's more so like he has the answer for everything right like it's kind of the beginning of that key and peel skit is both of those characters walk in the room and they like have these metaphors that they say like oh copy machine like i don't even remember what he says but they have these metaphors like oh garbage yeah. bin so full but it makes it feel so much better when you empty it like it's like those those kind of metaphorical you know messages that like kind of make the the person feel better about their life is i think what they're going for or what spike lee was so okay so doing. then flip this what if uh what if a beggar bands was played by like a white character yeah no and that's actually what i asked in the my class i'm like yeah. what if what if you flip it and then it's like but so then say it's Will like Smith is it a, was uh, the juna that's and 12 years Matt Damon slave. was bagger yeah no but no i brought that up and it's weird and it's tough and that's why we're three white guys discussing it and it's probably not the best way got, to do it i got no but clue when you flip it then it becomes like a white savior movie where the angel's a white dude helping out a black guy and that in itself might have issues too so i don't know what the right answer is and that's why I don't feel like we need to talk about it that much, but it's something that like this movie is known for. And that's where a lot of the criticism comes from. So it I felt is, like it had to be brought up. It is weird. And this is going to like dive into like, I don't know, maybe this opinion is not worth even mentioning, but like the, like, I don't, I don't know if I'd really even care. Like I notice, I know that it's supposed to be undertoned. And I know that that's a lot of things that stand with systemic racism is like things we don't notice. That's speaking yeah. for me who went to high school at a graduating class in the hundreds and hundreds. And we had probably less than five black kids in our entire graduating class, like in like nice suburbs of Milwaukee. Like the, like I should be the last one with the opinion, but like we never experience it. So if you don't outright see it, you might not know about it. If it doesn't affect your daily life, that's like this movie, I guess, in the way where it's underlying, there's nothing volatile about it. That's racist. But like you can, when there's repeated patterns of like how things are treated that don't even maybe like look, they're not even trying to make African-Americans look bad in the movie, but they're almost trying to like use them as a facilitator for something else whatever it is yeah but to go i just mentioned the movie like it's funny because i remember watching 12 years a slave for the first time and it's not the same thing but brad pitt helping and i don't know the actor's name because i'm terrible with movies you would tell edgy for but when brad pitt becomes like the hero in the movie where he's the one white person who's trying to help basically him get back to his family i am like this fucking white guy is the fucking hero. Like he is awesome. Like it's just, and it's different because I mean, I have my political views. Like I, I'm not saying I understand racism to the extent any person who actually experiences it does, but like, I do feel like almost like a homership towards white people who also feel the same way that like to help black people that I f feel in ways, you know? Yeah, so like, it's, you're like he would do i would do what he would do so you like seeing that on screen right and that's not what quinn was like exactly using as an example but like i did feel like that even though they're totally one stuck in slavery it's totally different than one guy trying to win a golf tournament maybe that's the epitome of like <laughs> white versus black okay so privilege. what if we do it this way what if we what if we put this story not in the 19 30s but put it in say like the 1990s when you know the like tiger woods is starting to well, peak maybe, out like black no, it was like already like the the um and it's past the civil rights movement civil rights movements already happened there's definitely i mean there's still i do think that change again three white dudes talking about it because i do think context matters and when a movie that takes place in the 30s where there's a lot of systemic racism going on like a lot of just in your face things going on and you have this you know caricature in Baker Vance helping out this rich white man rich he lives in like a rundown house but like a you know 
a well-ish off white dude. Like, I think that's perceived a little bit differently when it's, when it takes place the thirties in the South versus like the nineties somewhere else. Like, I think, I think all that stuff matters when it comes to movies. And I guess when I say context matters, I mean, I guess it affects it a little bit, but at the end of the day, if it's still set in present day, I mean, it's still problematic because it's still the same stereotype that's happening. Um, but it's just happening at a less problematic time. I don't know. Like it's tough. Like it's, it's, it's just tough to judge. Uh So I mean, I don't know. It's one of those things where like, I don't know what the right answer is. And that's just because like, like I'm not the demographic for it. Like, you know, like it takes someone like Spike Lee to point it out to people because like, I'm not going to notice it. Cause like, I don't, I, I haven't lived that. I would have never thought about it until you mentioned yeah. it. Yeah. And that, and which is like, of course we, we wouldn't, but like, that isn't to say it's not an issue. You just, you need someone with that different perspective to point it out and then be like, yeah, you know, you're right. Like, okay, well now let's try to avoid this from now on, or let's try to just tell like i don't want to say better stories but like more realistic ones like that's why i love black klansman i think black klansman should have won best picture that year over a movie green book which i think did a kind of a whitewashing look at racism you know versus black klansman which i think was a little more realistic and that's actually and that's a you know coincidentally a spike lee directed movie so um so yeah, I don't know. It's we like bring said, this back full circle though, and uh, yeah. make it lighthearted again because this is way too heavy yeah. for uh, this podcast. Despite all of the stuff that we don't know about because we're ignorant white people, uh, Will Smith had the best lines in this movie by far, and was yeah. he he hit some uh, he hit some great lines that made me laugh out loud numerous times. No, he is. No, he is. I mean, he's right he's most charismatic uh like you you asked earlier like why would he do this movie if like all these underlying issues were there i think he's he's turns out he's a very avid golfer so i think he was just like golf movie yeah sign me up i'm gonna do it uh which is something i didn't know about will smith Uh, i didn't know about this was before he started getting all his big big budget movies like the early 2000s when he started making it big that was I'd after say the mid 90s, what 96, 97. He did when it was Bad Boys, that was late 90s, 95. Right? So, like, oh, wow, was 90, that early? 95 was Bad Boys, 96 was Independence Day, 97 was Men in Black. Holy so cow, mid 90s are like when he blew up and it carried over into the 2000s. You know, I think he did. Uh, unfortunately 99 was wild wild west which kind of hey come on come on that's a fun movie matt that is a movie that, that i, I love that movie. fun that's you movie. know what that's a movie that would be good for this podcast that would be because i haven't seen that in forever that, and like <laughs> that's a movie that, that, like a, that was so popular when we were whatever eight years as, old as a kid i saw it in theaters with it. my dad yeah no like as a kid it was amazing but but when was the last time you watched it, Matt? As a kid. I haven't seen okay, it so since like, I was it would a kid. Be good if none of us have watched it in the last like 20 years, it would be a good one. That would be a good live watch, I think. Yeah, that's true. That would um, be a good live watch one. But that movie may have slowed his career down a little bit. Uh, but then 2000... Uh, that movie did Ollie. It was awesome. No, so I'm getting it. Like, 2000 was this, which... Men in Black we, 2, we talk, we talk Bad about Boys 2, I, Robot. Yeah, 2001 Hitch was Ali. Hitch was pretty good. The Pursuit of Happiness was amazing. I Am yeah. Legend, Hancock, Seven Pounds. It's really like the last 10 years, his career, like he hasn't really made a good movie in a while. I'm looking here now. I don't really see any good doesn't ones. doesn't need to. He's made enough. Concussion was okay. He makes bank. Concussion was fine. Yeah. like it was. Okay. I just don't like I actually didn't out. mind Bright. But that Bright? Bright? That's another one with some underlying issues. I well, I mean, it's supposed to be that. Let's just rename this podcast the Three White Dudes Talking. and About just, Will Smith. D- no, just, just racial different undertone topics. movies. Yeah. <laughs> racial <laughs> undertone movies. That would not go over well. Talking. <laughs> <laughs> we might get a, a lot of listeners in a certain demographic that we don't want. 
Yeah, I mean, I am in the demographic now that would probably right. not, maybe not demographic isn't the right term, but a certain like class, like type of person that we don't we want just that we that we talked about at the beginning of the last episode, but I edited it out, kind of like the region that you live in, Quinn. Oh yeah, you should laugh that. <laughs> Fucking leave that shit. Dude, I can show you Casey's. I think there's some over there now. We could all rename ourselves to names that start with K, and then it'd really be. <laughs> Again, we would get those same <laughs> listeners I was just talking about. <laughs> oh boy, this will probably. Get Anyways, uh, don't add, don't Smith. edit this. <laughs> some, let's do some Will Smith lines that are awesome. <laughs> I didn't write any down, so you're gonna have to fill, file through them. All right. Well, there's some. I mean, there's some great lines from this movie because if you're ever a golf, you know that there's always lines that you use when you golf. My grandpa always had lines about, like you know, during golf that he would say. Oh yeah. So there's some great ones. The three bad strokes, one stroke good till it gets you par is always good. Don't stand so close on your practice swing. That was always one when you That one's good. Shot. I like that one. Um I like right. this one is like uh the the one he says where uh Juna's like, This is getting embarrassing. He's like, Oh no, sir, this has been embarrassing <laughs> for quite some, quite some time now. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. That yeah, was or uh, I think it's that same scene. Um he says something like, you could sneak off. I could tell people you were sick. Based yeah. on how you've been playing, I don't think you'll be missed that much. <laughs> I don't think people will notice. Yeah, that one was good. Uh, no, he's got a lot of, lot of good, like, before I forget, good, bad, or garbage on Legend of Baker Vance. Uh, I'm going to go bad. I was honestly going to go good up until they fucking tied. And I just can't live with that. <laughs> i'm serious it is i don't think it's i yeah i know that's the thing it's the ending is so cheesy i didn't like i didn't think it was bad actually and i don't think it's really bad i just think it's not good enough to be considered good yeah like as a kid it would be like an easy good um yeah i'm like kind of with you bo where like out of 10 it's you know, I originally had it ranked like a 7.2, but rewatching it, it's going to fall into like the fives, which is like the fine range for me. Um, but I just, it was so tough to watch after taking that class. And like once the glass shatters on some of the issues with it, I probably got to go bad on it. Um, Matt Damon's swing is just the thing of nightmares too. <laughs> It just sucks too, because like we were just stating, it's gonna go bad. It's gonna be like pinned up next to other movies we call called bad, but it's not nearly as bad. Oh, it's bring up the, the list. best. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's the, the best bad movie. I was gonna say it's the best bad movie I think that we've had. I would put this right above like Small Soldiers Rumble in the Bronx. You think it's better than Small Soldiers? You saying? No, yeah, it's saying... be better than Small Soldiers. Well, you were saying worse, right? You said you put it between Rumble in the Bronx and Small no, Soldiers. No, I mean I'm just trying to remember oh, okay. those movies. I like it. I like this more than Small Soldiers, but not okay. as much as Chick All the Way. Okay. I would put it probably r- right, then right behind Cubed. Okay. I think it would above be this. Ago- above Gods of Egypt still. Yeah, I think so. Above the donuts. <laughs> it's it's and close. You, you want to know what's funny? I, I forgot we better. even watch Gods of Egypt. I totally forgot about that movie. Yeah, it's, <laughs> well, that's why I have. I feel it, like, like, you know, at a five point seven, it's so forgettable. Like I said, that's like the fine range. Like that's the forgettable stuff. Damn, you have Hubie Halloween at a six point one. I enjoyed it more than like that's good for me. Like the sixes is like good. Like I enjoyed that yeah, a lot more than I thought I would. I feel like I need right. to almost rewatch some of these to be like I, I, a lot of Adam Sandler. How is tiptoes? How is tiptoes that low, man? I am ashamed of you. That was the <laughs> yeah, most that's disgusting, not Matt. movie ever. As much fun as it was to talk about it, that movie was so bad. Yeah, but did you have fun watching it too? Uh, yeah. Like in the whole, like it's mm. so bad it's good sense. Yeah, <laughs> um, right. Yeah. That is like the definition of a so bad it's good movie. It is. That's why it's so awesome. <laughs> is that like uh, Super Mario Bros. too? Then or what? Like, no, what? that one's so bad it's just bad. No, yeah, Super Mario Bros. is just not great. There's no redeeming qualities of that movie at all. Good, like what's some other good lines. like golf golf sayings that you say? 
Like when you're golfing. I'm trying to, well, like my I just constantly say when someone hits a bad shot that you pay a lot of money, you might as well take as many shots as possible. Oh, yeah, that's great. You getting your money's worth? <laughs> I'd say my dad. My dad does the whole like. I want to get my money's worth on this course, you know, like see as much of the course as possible. When, when somebody hits the ball in the water, I tend to say something like the fish are fed well enough. <laughs> I've not heard that one before. I don't know. This is not even a golf thing, but the best joke that anybody's ever done to me on the golf course was done by my dad and it was father's day. So he was smoking a cigar or whatever, whatever. And he lit a match and he's like, have you ever seen a match burn twice? And I was like, like no like i've never physically and so he lit the match and he like lit his cigar then blew it out and then he took the match and put it on my arm like it burned the match and then burned my, myself the <laughs> jesus i mean i was like 23 like it wasn't like anything <laughs> mixed like you'd be it like i was like 10 funny. i was 10 years old and like oh child I was, no yeah i was it was funny like i was and it didn't even hurt that bad it was yeah. like i mean imagine like whatever a, yeah. like a, a it's not even on fire it wasn't oh. abusive at all nobody used to go ahead hunt my dad down <laughs> well if you have issues later with like matches we light up one up around you're like oh. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Just, this isn't a saying or anything but my grandpa would always just rip one what in my backswing you just fart be like, thanks, Grandpa. That's just dudes being dudes. Yeah. <laughs> guys he's, being dads. He's doing that, or like my dad's dropping a club in my backswing. <laughs> Don't do okay. this right. when Can playing. I get the, what are you guys? Well, Matt, I already know your your opinion on this, but iron covers or no iron covers? I think if you have iron covers, good for you. You officially declared yourself that you hit from the women's tees. Okay, I will hit from the women's tees <laughs> because I, I paid don't, I don't a lot of money for my that. irons. I don't want him to get all dinged up. I'm going to scratch him myself. I don't want him yeah, to scratch yeah. each other. He doesn't hit the ball enough for him to like <laughs> cause damage. So he wants him to look brand new. Hell yeah. Um, oh, the only like, thing I have covers for are my driver woods and putter. And I just bought a woods. putter cover. So what Literally am I just do bought with all these extra cover. covers. What? Put them over my irons. <laughs> I you're do have a cover list. for it. Someone's well, listening to this. I'm going to buy a driving list. iron just so I can hit it. And I'm only going to hit it when I'm with you. <laughs> Quinn's four iron is <laughs> not going to work well, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> Quinn's four iron is the thing he uses the most because he doesn't carry any woods. <laughs> I hate dri- a four iron. Driver, four iron. Three iron. Every hole, three my iron. Five, my five, five wood iron. is like my baby of a club. Dude, Sometimes I want to break my driver, driver in half, so I just use three my iron. five wood. Driver and three iron. Driver, four iron. Every, every part five. You should hit the ball farther. Then you wouldn't have to worry about a four iron. It'd just be driver, yeah, seven iron. You know iron. what, Bo? <laughs> I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> Masters predictions before we go in? Yeah, yeah. Um, everyone's, on, everyone's on Jordan Spieth. All right, wait. Because he just wait, won. Me, I, I posted a guy to you today that I'm like, I'm all about this guy now. Who is I'm it? all about this guy now? <laughs> yeah, so Cam Brooks. Smith. Cam Smith, Cam Smith, he's Australian. I do right. like Cameron Smith. He's my dude. He, have you seen old Quinn. man golf chat? Look at the video. Quinn. It's Cam Smith. Quinn, did you? Okay, just is this a recent? Is this a recent? Thing? Are you talking to anybody? You're just yelling at clouds right I'm now. I'm yelling at you, both well, of you. Let me talk here. Does no. this have his current look on it with the mustache and mullet? Yes. Look. Okay. Just look at the fucking video. He looks ridiculous. Let's watch the video. I do like That's him. My guy. You know this person is not actually Cam Smith. I was going to say, that does not look like I Cam know, it's Smith. not, but he looks like that. He's he does, close. like, he has a mullet and mustache like this guy, but it's not Cam He's Smith. blonde, isn't he? Yeah, it's very, yeah, it's, like, the, it's some of those shape. shitty looking blonde mustaches. I read um, somebody, I read, like, a fantasy article of, like, what happens if Spieth and Bryson are, like, the final pairing. That would be amazing. On Sunday. That would destroy and I think it was no laying up talking Wait, what about happened to, it. Wait, what yeah, happened too? to my boy, Brooks? Where's Brooks He's playing. He, no, but he, no. He, he, just, he is. He, like, faked an injury for the last three weeks he, and showed up in the Masters. So, no, it's funny. This is oh, actually what I was about God. to br- – This is what, what I was going to bring up. Brooks had – was it back surgery or not surgery, but he had a back I think issue. Was, or knee. Or both. Me, I think. And he was like reportedly going to be out for six to eight months. And then, yeah, last week, Brooks replied to everyone was like, oh, no, I'm playing in the Masters next week. But today, 
during practice rounds, they showed him like, you know, they, they'll air practice rounds on a golf channel. He, because of his knee, his knee's so bad, he can't bend his knee. So he's taking, when he drops down to read a putt, he's like doing a lunge. Oh, I saw. He was like on his like side. Yeah. He's like lunging. Yeah. Or, right. uh, you know what I mean? Like, uh, he yeah. Posted oh, a, no he joke. posted something on Instagram. Yeah. Instagram's where I saw it. Yeah. What was he? Uh, it was oh funny. Oh my goodness. Oh yes. Look at this. Yeah. See well, that? the swipe with the other picture is. Yeah. And then- Straight out of my childhood. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. Brooks is whatever to me. I'll, I always, like if he's in contention, I'll root for him because I was at his first major. So it's always kind of cool to like have him win more. I like also, Brooks. Like a dude to win on a busted knee. About golf. I just I'm not a Brooks guy. I don't. That's love fine. His, I don't. You like Jordan his... Spieth. You like the little weenies that just. Complain to their caddy for 18 holes and then occasionally hit a great shot. Yeah, Jordan Spieth, like, you know, whatever. Three majors, 12 (laughs) wins. Yeah, just a little weenie complaining all the time. Well, how many majors does Brooks have? Uh, Yeah, four. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. (laughs) You you did the, oh, wait, I could be wrong here. I don't know how many he actually has. Um, Well, Phil, I don't mind Jordan Spieth. Uh, He's fine. I just don't want. I do actually want to see, like I said, Bryson being in the top five and yeah. top leader after day three and then shooting like plus six. Yeah. When the did, back when Bryson out. kind of came out of nowhere, it feels like, because they were, Brooks was making fun of Bryson for so long. Bryson. Because Bryson, like, and him kind of had a feud. Yeah. Bryson. Because they like, always, oh, wait, no, Big Cat was always making fun of Bryson. He's like, Bryson Day Sham, yeah. blah, blah. But well, that's because Bryson is cause... actually, like, worth making fun of. Like, he actually does dumb and says dumb shit all the time yeah bryson is a weird cat like he so he actually had a pretty good like amateur career like i wouldn't say he was a nobody but he wasn't winning enough like for how big he was supposed to be he was not winning enough and then he like changes his body and now he's winning u.s opens and shit maybe maybe tony finau should try the same thing tony finau he's yoking up on protein I'm like Tony Finau is gonna turn into like Ricky Fowler and just disappear and like no one's gonna hear from him again. That'd be crazy after all the shit that he's gone through. I almost yeah. like, he's like gotta win one. <laughs> no, you'd think like he's gotta win something. Well, it's like the Jordan Speed thing in the last two months. Like you're on the yeah. top of the leaderboard. How many weeks in a row you gotta win eventually? But Finau, it's crazy how that at home the playoff against homa and bogeying the hole to lose not even homa <laughs> burning it yeah it's gotta be like the most defeating thing yeah that's t- that's tough but no so like everyone is picking jordan to win because like he won last week and I, augusta is where he plays the best i'd love to see jordan win i think it'll probably be it's weird because like jt has been playing like shit but he just he won the players a couple weeks ago but i could see it'll like be a, some a it'll be somebody wins. who's like not like a great probably a great golfer but like someone who's like you're never gonna know. hear from him again think, yeah like a, not like a top 20 golfer or like someone around that area like someone who's still good but not like jason uh, day. i would love jason day to win again that'd be a good example i i like i like jason day like, and he's won a major like he and he's won like 14 lee times westwood. on the tour I do lee, like lee westwood lee westwood would be like uh but he's been playing Jones. well if Lee Westwood would win, it'd be like when Sergio won four years ago. With less races. Is, is Rory yes. any decent anymore? You like never even hear of him. I, I like Rory. He won three times li- three times last year. I'm just looking at the ago? field right now. I don't I don't even know how. I'm just saying names that I recognize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, who is the guy that's in like jail in prison that couldn't make it? Um Brazilian Joe. Garcia. Brazilian? Well, I mean, Sergio Garcia is Spanish. Sergio. He's playing. Wait, what are you talking about? Yeah. I... Oh, let me look this up. Someone's in jail, and so he can't make the mask. Oh, Angel Cabrera. Oh, he's Cabrera. Argentina. He's from Argentina. Yeah. The Duck is his nickname. That's a terrible name. Dude, have you ever heard about the Argentine like duck? duck? No, but for real, do you guys know why his nickname is the Duck? I assumed it was because he waddles or looks like a duck. But no, uh, I'll, no. I'll give you the if that's not it, then no. Hold on. Let me read the facts before I just give it to you. <laughs> <clears throat> 
All right. The Argentinian lake duck. Very famous. <clears throat> the Argentinian lake duck has... <laughs> I can't even read this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just going to read it. <laughs> North American scientists have discovered the longest bird penis ever. A 42.5 centimeter organ belonging to a duck. <laughs> Report in this week's nature that they have found a specimen of the Argentinian lake duck that has a penis as long as its body, nearly half a meter long. This is extended an earlier estimate of the length of the duck's corkscrew shaped penis, which was 20 centimeters. So, yeah, I mean, that's as far as I'm going. <laughs> Argentinian Lake Duck. That is why on El Cabrera, little did you know. Yeah. I did not know that. So, thank you for that new information. Yeah, there Ooh. is. I don't know. I spent the one more time. Looking you up, know. I spent one time looking up the largest. Uh, <laughs> Bose like things in the animal kingdom. Yeah, Bose Google search <laughs> the long biggest penis in the animal kingdom. <laughs> when what's the next movie gonna be? I got one. What is it? You want it now? Are we doing this thing? Yeah. Because when we normally Face do. Off. What? Oh no! Face Face off. Off. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I do kind of like it though because I don't know if I've ever seen the whole thing. It's I've never seen it, Nicolas but Cage. I have heard such difference of opinions on the movie, and it like... sounds just crazy. I'm all in. I feel like I, I saw think I it have like maybe seen it. Maybe just like plus, uh, who doesn't like a little uh, Nicolas Cage unhinged? You can play it on Fubu TV. What is that? It's um, it's like a cable service. So you'd have to pay for it. Hey, John Woo's the director. Yeah, I'd say so. John Woo is a guy like he likes his action movies. So he definitely does. <laughs> no, I was gonna say uh, all these streaming services. We're just back at like having cable. Like, yeah, that's it. No, Thank you. Very yeah. annoying. Like everybody just it was fun. Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime. <laughs> that's my three. Great. All that shit works. And now we're just buying cable packages again. Yeah. Legally <laughs> streaming it. Legally. Legally illegal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quinn, why would you illegally stream something? Because uh, it's Savannah. They don't give a shit about anybody here. You'll get letters from your internet company <laughs> like saying, stop it. Well, we're mooching off of Casey's, so why do I need to get... He still gets the dial-up tone. He like starts up his computer and it sounds like it's going through like a boot up and then like a. No, nah, dude, we just steal Casey's Wi-Fi. I can I can get it from here. Who's <laughs> oh, like a casting? Yeah, <laughs> that's the most Savannah thing I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your neighbor's Casey? Casey who? Casey the gas station. <laughs> gas station, Casey, bro. Is that where you go grocery shopping? Oh God, no. Now we usually go down to Clinton. And there's a there's a high V or a Walmart and Aldi and stuff. How far of a drive is that? Um, half hour at most. Fuck that! I have four grocery stores within five minutes of my house, Quinn. It's the greatest thing. We have a nice grocery store in town, though. It's small, but it's nice. <laughs> Can't wait. All right. All right. You yeah. guys didn't have to wait for me. Good no, night. That's all right. Have a good one. You too. Face off. Peace out.